Greetings, Kerbonauts! This is Kerbal Space Program, unlike that other video that I did where I had to say it kind of wasn't. Anyway, a bunch of people are interested in what it takes to try to install and use the uh, different mods and uh, the configuration files and everything that I have set up for you guys to be able to play the same sort of system that I'm using for Project Odyssey. So I figured I would take a moment here to give you guys a little video on exactly how you go about uh, setting something like that up. Now this is not for the faint of heart. You're going to have to know a little bit about how KSP works, how the configuration files work, how module manager works, that sort of thing. But uh, some of it you'll learn from me and some of it you might already know. And as long as you have enough knowledge about all that, I think you can do a pretty good job of putting some of this stuff together and not really messing up your install or anything like that, uh, which would definitely not be advisable. Uh, so what you should do to start out then is make a copy of your KSP folder. So let's go take a look and see exactly what I'm talking about. So I play on Windows and I originally downloaded it on Steam, which means it is in my Steam folder. Uh, that can be found on whatever drive you have Steam on in Program Files x86, inside Steam, then down into Steam Apps where you'll find Common. And in there are all of the different programs that you have downloaded uh, from Steam. In my case, I have Kerbal Space Program and a whole bunch of copies of it. Uh, originally, it was that one at the top there where you can see Kerbal Space Program, except then I have copied it each time a new uh, version came out or something like that. And then I also have other things like the Duna Mission and the Maven, Real Solar System. Uh, all of those were the 022. Also have some 023 copies still left over like a uh, Duna Mission, Kerbal Multiplayer, uh, the one where I made all of my uh, Project Gateway videos, the one where I did all of my Project Gateway movie making, and then we move on to the 0235, where actually I have a, a Project Odyssey that is in 023, but I also made another copy for 0235 when I was uh, switching over to that. So I have two copies of Project Odyssey, but I'm not using that old one anymore. Debug there is for when I'm working on my mod, the Simple Part Organizer, or any kind of mod really for that matter. And then I have my new RSS for 0235, which I launched a Zarya replica, and well, it wasn't really a great replica, uh, and then completely screwed up on the editing and edited an actual bad launch of it and didn't edit the real one, but now I'm thinking rather than going back and fixing that, maybe I'll actually do a real good replica and launch that in real solar system. So maybe look for that in the future when I need to just take a break from doing Project Odyssey. Now the last one here is the mod viewers, and if we go into there, this is where I keep all of my different, they say 023, but they're actually 235. I upgraded them all at the same time. This is where I keep all of my different mods from lots of different installs. You can see I sort of try to direct myself to know where to go to find different ones. The reason I have all these multiples here is because I'm using uh, Windows, and Unity is a 32-bit application still, uh, or it creates 32-bit apps, that means that there's about a 3.6 to 3.8 gigabyte or so maximum amount of memory that any one application can use. And so that's why I have to create all those different directories there. And those then allow me to load up, like if I want to go see AIES parts, then I just go to that one in the middle that says LLL and AIES. I load that up, I can look at some of the parts, uh, but I can't look at like KW Rocketry or anything because that's in a whole different directory. Anyway, I figure out where the parts are that I want to use. I open up multiple copies all at the same time. I copy all of that into a temporary directory where I can then view them. And then once I've done that, I decide what I'm going to use. I put it into my program that creates the install and you know long story short that's how I get where uh, all the files that I have inside Project Odyssey. So what you need to do is start by making a copy of your KSP folder to some other location so that we can work on that. Then you need to delete the game data folder or the contents of the game data folder. Meanwhile, we go out here to some video like say this number four for Kethane and we scroll down where you'll find a show me more button. And by opening that up on the video, you're going to be able to click on a link that'll take you to the Project Odyssey forum. 
Out there, if you scroll down just a little bit, you're going to find a craft files button that you can click and it will take you to my Dropbox uh, that you can download and then open up the install there of all the different files. So now when you open that, you're gonna find a bunch of different things and they need to go in a few different locations. If we start at the top with custom configs, that and the folder right under it, the game data folder, both of those are going to the contents of the game data folder, that is. Both of those are going to go into your game data folder. So this is what's inside the custom configs folder, and that goes inside your game data folder. And this is what's inside my game data folder and that has to get copied, all the contents here, copied on top of whatever's already inside of your game data after you've done any mod installations. So going back to the actual Odyssey folder, you can see we also have subassemblies, VAB, Game Balance, Program, and Tdris C. Uh, the game data and the Tdris C are just some doc files I was using in order to keep track of some notes for myself. Program, that's a C sharp program that actually does the copying of all of my mod parts into my game data folder. If you're an actual programmer, you should be able to figure out how to make that work. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be going in and dealing with just the subassemblies and the VAB. The VAB, what we want to do is go down into your save folder. So for example, if we take my project Odyssey, we have a saves folder in there where if we go in, I have a few different things, including an Odyssey save folder. And in there, I have my persistent file and my quick save. And uh, if you just go into the ships folder and then into the VAB, that's where, of course, you're keeping all of your craft files. And you can copy the craft files from my thing over into yours. Uh, the subassemblies works the same way. You go out to the main folder, you find the subassemblies, you take mine, you copy them in there. And now this is where it starts to get complicated, unfortunately. So there are way too many parts to include all the different mods that you would need in order to get all the little bits that come from all the different locations in those mods. Uh, they, you would run out of memory unless you're running under Linux. So what you're going to need to do is figure out which of those parts actually goes into the different mods and which one which of those parts can be deleted and i suppose you could start off by copying all the parts and then slowly removing parts that aren't necessary uh, however that is going to be potentially problematic as we go forward because i might add back parts that i want to use in the future anyway uh, unless you know how to read the c sharp program which here let's take a quick look at what that looks like so in my main here, you can see that the first thing it does is it backs up all of my files in my VAB so that in case I do something wrong, I have a backup of every ship file that I've made, all the craft files. The next thing it does is it deletes everything in my game data folder and it recreates the folder by then copying a bunch of things in one at a time. The first step here is to go through all the different types of mod and copy the files that are specific to just that mod. For example, if we take a look at Deadly Reentry here, we can see that it copies over the directory and then removes a couple things that I'm not going to want installed from them. Next up, back in the main, we go through where we copy a bunch of individual parts. And there's a whole bunch of little copy functions that manage bringing in all the individual parts that I want. For example, this one called custom is where I copy in all the parts for anything that I have welded together, parts from another uh, install and brought them over to here. The program knows where to get all of my parts because I have hard coded the paths on where to find them all up here at the top of the program. And finally, that custom configs folder, that comes from all of the different dot copies that are happening when I call all the different part functions. Like if we take a look at this one here on probes, you can see that it's creating a folder called probes where it then copies into there a CFG file that it composes by putting together all of these sections and values that override the default elements of the part files by using module man. Manager. And then that ultimately is what results in me being able to have everything custom just for this install of Project Odyssey. 
And now this brings us back to why I didn't originally want to have to try to put together all of this stuff, because as you can see, the parts don't actually exist. The artwork, the models, the textures, they come from various different part files, but they get put together and they get assembled into my game data directory using that C-sharp program. So unless somebody out there wants to try to help out by actually figuring out like a list of parts or maybe coming up with a more generic way of copying those files in, like say, you know, I don't know, create a batch file that actually copies them in one by one, although I don't know exactly how you'd want to set something like that up. But anyway, unless you can do that, uh, you're not going to be able to run the actual game where you get in uh, my subassemblies and stuff, because I think what's going to happen is when you go to use that subassembly, it's going to say that there are either models missing, or it's going to not have the right config files installed, or it's not going to have some of the parts, uh, textures, something is not going to show up. And it'll probably say that the part is invalid. But if you open up the debug console and you take a look at what it says is missing and you copy those parts in one by one by hand or something, or if you go look at that C sharp and just use it as a text reference to try and find the names of all the different uh, models that I have included, then uh, you probably will be able to get it to work. So. Unfortunately, like I said, I can't really spend a lot of time trying to make an install and I don't want to try to deal with the copyright infringement problems of actually putting together a compilation mod or anything like that that has all the different parts in it or zipping up my game data directory uh, just flat out and putting it up as a zip file of its own. Uh, but if you can make it work, then maybe you can help out, go out to the forums and help other people who are having issues with it. You know. And then uh, together we can make this and I can keep on going making the Project Odyssey videos and you guys can keep putting together the ships and kind of following along and trying to do the same things if that's what you're interested in. So anyway, that's going to do it for this time. Until next time, I will see you later, Kerbinauts.